joint session of Congress tomorrow night. What will he say? Let's get a preview with Michael Smirkanish, CNN political commentator and host of CNN Smirkanish, as well as the Michael Smirkanish program on Sirius XM. Michael, great to see you this morning. So what are you going to be listening for in this first uh, big address in front of Congress? I think tone, tone more than substance, because I doubt it'll be the same tone that he offered at CPAC. You know, if you come in and you're, and you're talking about fake news and you're railing against the media and you're using all of those Trump talking points for very conservative folks, you're losing half the audience that will be there in the well of the Congress and half of those will be watching on television. I've, I've never seen a pivot from President Trump, from candidate Trump, so I don't think it'll be a different individual. I just don't think that he'll be stressing the same things that he did at the end of last week. Will what got him here get him where he wants to be when it comes to the Tea Party? I guess really they will decide that, right? Do you think the Tea Party has what it takes to man up, hold on to their convictions, and fight the president's plan if it's not paid for dollar for dollar? Or do you think that they're going to respect their constituents, most of whom are Trump people, and just swallow it? I think that the lesson of, of President George W. Bush on fiscal matters is that they're not going to give President Trump enough rope in that respect. In other words, I think they will hold him financially accountable. I was listening to your conversation with Governor McAuliffe. That there, there's a fundamental question on the Affordable Care Act that needs to be answered, and that is, are they going to require that all Americans have health insurance? And if the answer to that individual mandate question is no, then there's not going to be enough money in the kitchen to provide protection for everybody. I mean, that's the fundamental mm -hmm. fiscal issue, and I don't think they've yet resolved that. Mm. So, Michael, I know you like talking about politics, but you really like talking about the Oscars <laughs> and what happened at the Academy Awards. If people are just waking up, they need to know that there was a major faux pas uh, and the wrong movie was announced as the winner. So let's recap this. <laughs> the Academy Award... For best picture. You're awesome. <laughs> Come on. La La Land. Yeah! Guys, guys, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, there's a mistake. There's, there's a mistake. Moonlight, you guys won best picture. Moonlight won. Come on, this is not a joke. Come this on. is not a joke. I'm afraid they read the wrong thing. This is. This is not a joke. Moonlight has won Best Picture. Moonlight, Best Picture. Hashtag the snatch. You see him take that card from Warren Beatty? Michael, who do you blame here? I blame Warren Beatty. And look, this happened three hours after I'd gone to bed. But this morning, I have sapruder the tape, and I've been watching your coverage. <laughs> and if you pay very close attention, when Warren Beatty gets that envelope and he pulls out the card, he goes back into the envelope because he figures there's got to be another one. And now we know that the card that he's holding says Emma Stone, La La Land. And so he stammers a bit. And then he passes the hot potato to poor <laughs> Faye Dunaway. She looks down, she sees La La Land, and she blurts it out. Yeah. Warren Beatty, and, and people are saying, oh, Price Waterhouse Coopers. Sure, somebody mm -hmm. gave him the wrong envelope. True. But Warren Beatty should have headed that off at the pass. Except, Michael, this has never happened before. You don't think that you have the wrong envelope. So he's thinking, like, surely my eyes are playing tricks on me. And he shows it to her, like, can you make sense of this? And she just goes, you know. Oh, no. La La Land. No, no, no. This, no, this would be like Cuomo handing you bad news, you know, like real yeah. fake news. It's true. And, and saying, here, camera, you, know you read it. He makes I'm a good point. He makes a good point. As someone who is charged with having to clean up mess a lot here, he should have done it uh, differently. <laughs> he, he did hand it off to her. I'm a fan of Warren Beatty, but even though he got bad information, yeah. he did let her deliver the bad which news. Which one of us cleans up the mess? Oh, I do a lot of cleaning. You clean up lot the of, mess? A lot of cleaning. <laughs> Or do you I'm like a human sniffer. Or do you do you cause the mess? No, I cause trouble. I cause trouble. I'm here to fight trouble. the good fight. Yes, yeah.
Wow, that's an interesting interpretation. Um, so, Michael, isn't it? I mean, it was just, it was epic to watch. You can see the wheels turning with Warren Beatty. Yeah, they were turning. They were saying, here, you say it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to own this moment <laughs> forever? Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of, I thought there was a lot of class and dignity yes. that was exhibited. I mean, my gosh, you know, you, you, you'd have to feel so uh, embarrassed if you had delivered an acceptance speech for an award now that you didn't really receive, mm. and yet they all took it like champions, and, and I thought that was a great moment. And frankly, it created more buzz than, than mm -hmm. even the jokes that Jimmy Kimmel told about the president. And, and, and caused a nice moment between the two movies, too, hey. you know? And although... Smirconish's theory is borne out by the way that producer took the card for Warren yeah. Beatty. He shared your feelings <laughs> about what should have been done. But you know, live TV, that's the beauty of it. Sometimes a lot it's of true. spontaneity happens. Michael Smirconish, thank you very much. Great to talk to you. See you guys. All right. A heavy story this morning. Another gold star father taking on the president. This father's son died in the Yemen raid. He was that Navy SEAL chief. He wants something done about it that's not being done. We'll tell you next.